Hello guys, and welcome back. If you've been wondering where I've been for a minute, well, I've been playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel this week. The Duelist Cup competition is ongoing currently, and I decided to throw my hat in the ring and give it a try. Now, a little bit of backstory. I recently got back into Yu-Gi-Oh! because of a friend of mine. My friend had asked me if I knew how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! because she was looking to learn so that she could play against her cousin. So I decided to log back into Master Duel after a sizable break, and I came across a new deck that I really enjoy playing. Snake Eyes is an archetype that I appreciate not only the art but the playstyle. So with that I decided to spend a bunch of my cubes to start building the deck. And it took a minute. My first variant was a True King Zodiac Snake Eyes build, but I finally settled into a build that I like a lot better. It has the ability to first turn kill, and if you see disruption then it just proceeds to go into its regular negate combo. Additionally it does decent going second, and my favorite spice is obviously Fuko Bird. So with a build that I loved in hand, I started to go for the first round of the Duelist Cup. And I didn't have a lot of time to spare. I joined this pretty late, only a few days to actually qualify. However, my win rate in the ranked qualifier was nearly 80%. And that is despite of the fact that my internet caused a few disconnection losses. Not to mention this timeout as I was about to attack for game. Ugh. Nevertheless, I was able to qualify in time. Depending on when I can get this video up, I'll be showing on the screen right now my current progress in stage two of the Duelist Cup. Hopefully it's good. And so without further ado, let's get into the deck list. All right, so here is the deck list. I'll so slowly scroll through all of this just so you can get a brief thing, and then we'll talk about some of the choices. The only thing I'd really change about this is I'm only playing one Ash Blossom. That's partially because I only had one Ash Blossom and I was short on some UR prints. Additionally, there's kind of hard to find space here. We're playing exactly 40, and I think that's important for an FTK deck so that we can get into our combo pieces easier. But at the same time, it's hard to kind of fit the pieces you want in a best of one format. Uh, if this was, say, a best of three format like the TCG, it'd be a lot easier to move some of these tech cards back into the side deck and play the Ash Blossom. But as it is, it's a little bit hard to find spots for the Ash Blossom, but we'll talk about where those could potentially be. I think Ash Blossom is obviously a really good card for stopping your opponent. It has the downside of being a hard once per turn, so drawing two of them is bad. However, um, the upside of playing it in this deck is it's a fire, so it has all of the synergy with the regular fire stuff that you can add here, so that's really important. Additionally, this deck is you know hurt a lot by Max C, and Ash Blossom is a Max C counter, so having more is partially due to just countering Max C, which is the main reason I want to play multiples, because Playing it at one is not terrible if you're just playing it as the true hand trap, but we're actually using it almost offensively. We're like, all right, we're going for the FTK. We don't want you to max C and draw into potentially more hand traps. We're gonna we're gonna ash it and and proceed to FTK you. So that's I think the only change I'd make here. So let's talk about it. Um, Jet Synchron. I cannot believe this card's not banned. It it's so good even by itself, and it's searchable with all of the you know, Snake Eyes stuff, so that's crazy. Uh, then we have Ash. This is Snake Eyes Ash, not Ash Blossom. It's the best card in the archetype, I think. Well, maybe not, but it's definitely the starter. It's definitely the best card you want to see in your opening hand. It enables the FDK and enables to OTKs if you're going second. Um, it's so important to see this card. And uh, then next we're going to play Oak. I play two because if you see two, uh, you, you want to do C1 in the main deck. Um, so if you draw one, it's not terrible. Um, and I know a lot of people try to play one, but I think two is important for longer grind games. It's also important in the FTK. If for some reason you draw the one Oak, you can still have the second Oak in the deck. And while it's like not terrible to see two, it does hurt a little bit because you do have to add more cards. I also play Birch. This one's also another one that potentially gets dropped, but 
I do like it for the remote main reason I like it is if for some reason your poplar uh, gets stopped or you've already used it, it allows you to continue the play even if you have the poplars in hand or you've already used them. It allows you to play during your opponent's turn too. So it has some utility there and it's always searchable when you need it. So it's not terrible. And then Poplar. Poplar is probably the best card uh, in the archetype. It's just so much of the engine and it's important it's so important uh you play two because obviously you'd rather see ash but poplar is not bad to see you know seeing poplar and normal summoning it is not a bad play you will not have the fdk if you do that but you will have plenty of negates and you'll be fine if you do do that um, additionally playing two enables you to most likely have one left in the deck obviously there are bad times when you draw two poplars in your opening hand but generally you're going to draw one and um, you'll be having the second one so you can continue to add it so that it can special and you have the full combo there then max c is probably the best card in the actual game um, it's just so important i think every deck needs to run it i think i don't think there's any exceptions like it's just too good to not play um, we talked about the ash blossom before we're playing one of it um, but we're also playing one Goat Spell, partially because we are playing a Crossout Designator, so it does give us access there, partially because this is just a really good card. It's amazing in the mirror match, and almost more importantly is that it stops Called by the Graves. Um, it, it, so it can stop you know, a Flamber's Dragon, and it can stop a Called by the Graves. So it's got a lot of utility there. It's obviously hard once per turn, and it's not as good as Ash. It's also not a Fire, so we never play more than one, but I do like teching in at one. We're going to play two uh, Diabelle Star. This card is really good. It's probably one of the most splashable engine cards ever. It works really well with Snake Eyes because you can go obviously get your Sinful Spoils, which, you know, share the archetype, so to speak. It is amazing. It's super searchable. Um, it's part of the, OT the FTK um, potential. It makes OTKing really easy. And yeah, we aren't playing three, though. Um, it's, you know, for space, it is super searchable. So, I mean, potentially you could try and play three, um, but I, I do really like it at two. And then we're going to play two Flamber's Dragon. You do need to play two of these in order to FDK. That's just has to happen. Um, I know a lot of people try to play one because this is, you know, not a card you want to draw. Um, every time, I mean, it doesn't completely brick your hand if you draw it you can still play the whole combo but every flamber's dragon that you draw is one less card so if you draw both flamber's dragons you're effectively playing with a three card hand uh, so you don't want to see them but you know it's not terrible to have and even in the hand is you know if you have a discard outlet like a diabell star or a jet synchron it's still decent because it can still get its effect to trigger off those we're gonna play one nibiru um obviously nibiru is so good I, I think i think nibiru is one of those cards that you need to play at least one of because maxi you know doesn't have any teeth by itself obviously it, it draws a ton of cards but if you're not drawing into hand traps it's kind of you know not that good and, and nibiru is probably the best hand trap to draw into with maxi um it it gives maxi that type of teeth you know if you're going uh, first and then you know they're trying to otk you and you max c them you can actually max c into nibiru so it gives them that fear you don't necessarily have to play three you can but i i like it at one because it just it gives me the option to draw into it max c so if they take the max c challenge i know that i'm gonna get in nibiru eventually before they deck me so it's gonna be fine like i just really like it at one all right, so that's the monsters. So let's move on to spells. Uh, we're going to play, you know, obviously your board wipes, your regeki, and your um, your Harpy's Feather Duster. Harpy's Feather Duster is a must because there are just certain decks that play Floodgates. You know, there's Labyrinth decks. You just need it. Like, that will never go. Regeki, I think, potentially could leave at some point. It really functions as just taking a monster negate out of the picture. Um, but it, it is also nice to just kind of, like, you know get rid of boards while snake eyes has a ton of plussing and has good amounts of removal and there is a 
the top end. There's like only so many removal that you can get in the actual archetype. And if your opponent just like puts so many bodies on the board, it can sometimes get a little bit difficult to get rid of all of them. Regeki just takes care of that. Um, and then we'll just talk and we'll skip over to uh, Lightning Storm for a second. This is one of the cards that definitely could probably um, come out for Ash at some point in the future. This is a card that I would never play in the main deck uh, necessarily. Uh, I would put this in the side deck, but because there's no side deck, this is the best one format. We're playing in the main deck. And it basically functions as a second Harpy's Feather Jester. It could also be a you know a half a Regeki or a worse Regeki, although most people play around it by playing by special summoning in defense mode. So like it's it's all right. Um, but you know, it is another blowout card against, you know, floodgate decks. And I think that's super important, especially as you're going up the ladder. Sometimes you don't want to auto lose when you see those decks. So it 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 kind of needs to be there. But it, I, I don't know, I have very mixed feelings about it because sometimes it's amazing and other times it's like a total brick. Um, but, you know, if you can discard out, it's fine. Uh, so speaking of the other power spells, we have one for one. This is like a great starter. It's also a great extender. It's so powerful in this deck. It can get you basically all of the Snake Eyes cards that you need. It, you know, obviously gives you your discard outlet. So good. So good. And then Monster Reborn is actually also really, really good. It's obviously an extender, which is fantastic. Um, it helps for OTKs when you need them. It helps the FTK too, because depending on where the hand traps lie, you could potentially have uh, a hand trap stop you and then Monster Reborn basically bring it back. And um, yeah, depending on what hand trap and where they do it, I've, I've had FTKs get re-enabled by having Monster Reborn as an extender. Additionally, it actually plays really well going second, which is kind of funny. Um, that's not typical of most formats, but in this specific format, when you're playing like mirror matches and they have Promethean Princess, you can take the Promethean Princess out of their deck and now you've basic out of their graveyard and now you've basically negated their Promethean Princess and now you also get it, an extender because it's now you know a monster reborn itself um, this can also work with Kashtiras too like you know you can pull out a uh, unicorn or whatever it is so you know monster reborn is actually pretty good going second uh in this particular format too so i really like it all right so we are going to play one subversion this is one that i didn't initially play and it's kind of grown on me it you know, it's a slow, normal spell that targets a face-up monster. So it's definitely got a lot of issues there. But it is a removal. It's it's like a worse mind control, basically. Um, but it can bait out negates. Like, sometimes they just have to negate it. And, and sometimes they can't even. You, let's say they have a four material Appalooza. That's great. And just, this is a spell and they are going to lose that all the investment in the Appalooza. So it's really nice that way. And then, of course, it's searchable. So you can get it when you need it like it's just one card in the deck and you can get it when you need it so I, that's i think probably why we play it and if you do draw into it no problem discarding it because if you put it with like a wanted or something you can shuffle it back in and draw a card so you know you get a somewhat of a plus from that so mm, I, mean, I am it is growing on me just as kind of there Original Sinfuls is literally the best uh, card in the spells for for Snake Eyes specifically. <laughs> we haven't gotten to the Wanted yet, but this card obviously allows you to go search and special summon, um, and it has it's a great extender. It's it's a searchable extender. You can search it with many different things. It's a cross archetype card, and then you know beyond that. Once you get your you know whole combo off, whether it's FTK or OTK, if if for some reason uh, you have to come back to the, your next turn, you can have it banished to go search for your extenders and go into the OTK. So you know if your FTK fails and you have to go into the negate board, and then your negate board negates their stuff, but now you need to you know turn into an OTK, you can go search the pieces you need. So it's you know really good turn one, but it also in the graveyard you know has recursion turns after that. Then you have the field spell. This card is really fun designed. It really is. It's, it obviously enables the FTK, so we have to play it at one. And it is so fun in the mirror match. Like, it is crazy to play this card in the mirror match. I just, I don't know. When they design this card, I think it's hilarious. And in the mirror match, you definitely want to see it. You want to remove your opponent's uh, thought about playing it too, but it just bricks too much. Like, you, when you need it, you can go get it. 
And I've seen, you know, in the mirror match, sometimes, you know, you blow up your opponents really quickly. And if they play a second one, that might be a upside for seeing two. But this deck's trying to, you know, FTK and end the game turn one. And if not turn three, you know, by turn three, you should be ending the game. And so I, it's just not worth drawing into two. The The worst case scenario would obviously be drawing into two of the field spell opening hand. That's just not going to be something you want to do. So we play one of it. We also play Cosmic Cyclone. Cosmic Cyclone is another one where it's like, uh, this probably could be another Ash, maybe, but it, it's so useful in certain situations. Um, and a lot, like if you go first, you can set it and it can, it can, you know, negate things that are continuous. Almost most of the decks in the meta have things that need to stick around. Like, you know, two elements have their field spell even, and Keshtira have that continuous spell card. So like most decks have something it can pop. And worst case scenario, it's just an MST. Like you can pop, um, you know, a blind, a blind set card. And sometimes that just enables you to go off. Sometimes they just, you know, they're not really a back row deck, but they set their imperm and you can just, you know, that's just enough. And, or you don't know what it is and it just gets rid of the uncertainty. And I really do like it. It's a quick play spell. So we can do it uh, obviously during draw phase, which is important sometimes when people are setting up, especially in the mirror match, you know, you can pop not only the field spell, but you can pop a flamberge and it, and it bounces the flam or it banishes the flamberge. So like, they don't get the trigger off of it so i i really do like it actually um and, and it, i just really hate floodgates too so it's another card that we can draw and top deck into to get rid of floodgates so yeah we're just playing at one though um and anyway called by the grave we're playing an ft day ftk deck you have to play this to stop hand traps additionally like in the mirror match it's so good this format like the graveyard is the it's key so it's really really powerful in this format i, I think you have to play it and then uh cross out designator um functions very differently than you know you're called by the grave but 90 percent of the time it's doing the same job role as called by the grave it's literally the third called by the grave um, but it has some other utilities. It's usually not as good to set as Called by the Grave, but it, it does things differently. It's like a very different card. So like that 10% of the time, it's not doing the same thing. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's also one of the reasons we play a lot of one ofs because like it just allows us access to kind of negate things that could be problematic. Um, I don't know. It's a fun card. And speaking of one ofs, uh, we're going to play one Droplets. This card is so good and at the same time so bad. Um, but it is, uh, if you're playing it right, your opponent can't respond to it and it just like can destroy their board. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Obviously, it has like two downsides. Uh, one is that you're losing card advantage, but if there's any deck that can keep up with the card advantage loss from sending cards to the graveyard. It's definitely snake eyes. So you can definitely make that back up. Additionally, it, you know, hurts if your opponent plays anything that prevents uh, things from going to the grave, like a macrocosmos, a D fissure, that hand trap that people play every once in a while um, that does hurt, but those cards blow up this deck anyway. And so you need to figure out how to deal with those or hope not to see them. So, you know, having droplets be a dead card off those, not too bad. The upside of this card is, uh, two things, right? You can, you can clear a whole board like Regeki or lightning storm is going to clear out a negate, but this one can clear out like four negates potentially. Um, I mean, there are times when you go second, you play droplets, you discard, uh, four other cards, you clear out new gates of four, and then, and then you proceed to use your last card Ash to, to OTK them like totally possible. Um, it does happen and that's amazing. Uh, obviously there are shenanigans you can play around with it, but it's so good for, for that reason. And then the other part that's really nice and why it's better than something like a uh, dark ruler, no more is it's actually not bad to see it going first. Like if you go first, you can just set this card. No one's really expecting it. It's not a super highly played card in the current format, but um, you can set it and then your snake eyes are all live again. So you can send your flambers. You can, you can use, you know, the same combos, right? And you can just droplets and you can hit like four things at the same time. It's a negate and you get all the pluses that you would. It's like really good in this deck. I really enjoy it. Uh, speaking of really good, Wanted. This is the best Rota I've ever dang seen. It's a quick play spell. So mind you, you can do this in the draw phase, which allows you to play around something like a Droll Lockbird because it only 
triggers on an add to hand that's not in the draw phase you can do this in the draw phase it's amazing and then of course it has a graveyard effect that you can use on the same turn that draws you a card so you're plus oneing every time you're also searching what you need and yeah it's like pot of greed but better um and it's searchable it's a searchable search card it's a searchable rota that also has a draw when it goes to the graveyard effect and it's uh, a quick play like it's so I, I, it's such a good card i don't know how to explain it i if this deck continues to play really well i don't imagine this will stay at three that's all i have to say about that but for now it's at three and we play it infinite impermanence uh, it is a great hand trap. This is a hand trap that we, you know, love to see off of Max C. It's also something that can't be hit by Called by the Grave. That's amazing. And it's something that if we go first, we just set it and it becomes a really good trap. Like it's just a really decent trap to just set. So it's not a problem drawing first. And then another card, last one, Betrayal. This is a card that I didn't have in the original builds of this it's one that i'm potentially looking at maybe cutting again because uh we need space for another ash maybe it's it's um it's a searchable spell off of um the black witch but the the reason why we play it is for max c right if your opponent max sees you you can just um search this off dbl star you stop the combo and you just get into gate. So you're like, all right, max C, we just like stop and we go on a negate. And that's kind of the thought process for this. The problem is um, we hate drawing it. And like, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's another thing that's also there is part of me is like, hey, I could just stop the max C if this was just an Ash. And right, you can just stop the max C. Now, Ash, you have to actually have in hand. This you can just have in the deck anywhere. And part of the combo, you can just like search it out. Um, but most times I find myself skipping this part and I hate to draw it. Every time I draw it, I'm, I'm very mad. And um, like I said, I end up the most of the time, the combo just, I end up skipping it, but it's there currently uh to stop midway through if they max see me i haven't made a decision there um but this would be another potential uh switch to ash blossom but i do i do really like it It allows you to kind of play during your opponent's turn um and, and stuff like that so that's to be determined there um but yeah i don't know the main deck's an even 40 I, I generally like it like i said the only thing i would potentially change is adding more ash blossom and and trying to find where that would be without going over 40 because we want to see ash as much as possible and so we need to have as many searches to get to it and we need to have as least amount of cards in the deck as possible to get to the three ash right we just need to see those um and then uh let's move on the extra deck so obviously our ftk <laughs> is enabled by blaze phoenix this nice old card fantastic uh burns 300 for each uh card on the field um yeah anyway it's not a hard ones per turn so we can proceed to loop it which is the fun part woo awesome so that's kind of the the combo is we're we're looping blaze phoenix we need nine cards to get it to work because we're going to loop it three times so we need at least nine cards to get the ftk um so just keep that in mind as you're going through because sometimes it's it's uh, tight I, I you can potentially get up to 10 cards um but most of the time it's going to be nine um because if you don't see wanted you will be to nine and if you if you have to use a card to stop a hand trap then you'll be down one so if you see wanted and you have a hand trap that's fine or if you you know don't see wanted that's fine if you don't see a hand trap so you, you got to get to nine which can be a little bit of struggle but um like i said if if you need to pull off and you know they hand trap you and you don't have enough to get any more then you can just go into negate combos and you're you're fine um otherwise you just win it's like ftk why not and and you can see in the main deck there's literally no bricks for the ftk arguably you know the second flamber's dragon does is required for the ftk but most people are playing i feel like two flamber's dragon for the grind games anyway there's nothing no bricks we're playing for the ftk we're just taking up some extra deck spaces um so i love that uh formula synchron and flamberge uh or baron de fleur is great because you make it with flamberge um and yeah that's pretty standard you know we use the jet synchron 
Jet Synchron, by the way, comes back with Ash, or I'm sorry, Oak, which is silly. Um, just so good. And it's a negate. And Fleur is so good in this deck because it's like, okay, we get a pop, we get a negate. And then the part that everyone also forgets is, maybe not everyone, but one that's mostly forgotten is during the standby phase, you can summon back a Flamberge. <laughs> Flamberge can get back the uh, Formula Synchron, and then you can make the Baron de Fleur again, get the plus cards off Flamberge, and get the Negate back. Uh, so it's kind of pretty much every every turn you can loop it again and again and again. It's, it's very good. All right, my favorite spicy tech here, the... Fuko Bird. This card is so fun. It's unaffected by card effects and it cannot be destroyed basically when you detach. Uh, two level ones, it's like quite literally the easiest thing to make in this deck. And I love playing it. It's another way to just hard stop on max C. Like they max C and you're like, fine, I'll just make Fuko Bird. And you get the one one extra card off the Fuko Bird and, and then I'm just going to pass. And they really can't kill you. There's The only way to get rid of it is like a tribute tribute type of you know deal. So like we're thinking like Kaijus um, or, or whatnot. There's, there's not a lot of ways for you to actually get rid of this. Most decks can't. And so you can be pretty sure that you're going to be able to sit on this. Um, which is, which is fantastic. So if you max C, you just do it. And additionally, you're not using it in that effect as much as you are using it. If your opponent is going first and they make a huge board and you're trying to bait out things and your opponent's, you know, smartly waiting for more of the impactful things to negate, like the Flamber's dragon and, and, you know, those things, sometimes you can just be like, Hey, you have all these negates, you're waiting to for the more impactful stuff we're just going to make this bird and it's an inherent special summon so as soon as you say to go they can't touch it and there's nothing on your turn that can deal with this card so uh they really just like just be like all right we're just gonna yeah, attack into you if it's a defense position monster the better obviously if it's attack you have to detach which is less good and then you just go into Downard and go into Zeus. And Downard you don't need all the time, but sometimes you do need it. And obviously you prefer not to use it because obviously it gives an uh, opening for them to uh, get rid of it. But if you want to get double Zeus, that's a four material Zeus, you can go into Downard. So that's you know where that comes from. And then Zeus is just so good. It's... Um, you know, it, it allows you to wipe things. It's one of the best things to get rid of back row for this deck. It, it's so versatile. It allows you to clear established boards. You know, if you can make it with four materials, it can chain to itself. So, you know, they can negate it once and then you chain to the negate. So it still goes off. They got to negate it again. Such a powerful card. I really like it spice wise. Um, it just really helps in grind games. Just, you know, turn the game back to reset the game. And I, it's really helpful. Link Karibo is such a good card um, in this in this thing. It, it, it pairs so well with Poplar. It allows you to plus on Poplar, and then you know, sitting in the grave every turn, you can um, bring it back. So it allows you to to bounce um, your things, which is which is fantastic because um, let's say they try to Valor you or Impermanence you, you can dodge them with your Link Karibo, and they still go off. And it's just something you have in the grave and you basically make it for free because Poplar, you know, you comes back. So it's a plus one with Poplar and, and it allows you to defend your stuff, right? It allows you to defend a lot of your uh, negates, uh, most importantly, Appaloosa and all those things is super, super important. Sunlight Wolf. Another reason why you want to play more Ashes, but it's a it's a Link Climber. It allows you to uh, add you know, cards back to hand and set up for next turn. It, it's very easy to special summon to it to the arrow, and it allows you to you know get out of like a Promethean Princess. So it's it's super good. And then IP is part of the main combo. We like playing during your opponent's turn. Hence the Formula Synchron. Hence the Mascarena. Um, it's pretty easy to get this off, and you know. You know, this is where you go into your four material Appaloosa um, that cannot be destroyed by uh, card effects. So that's super nice, like great. Um, and it can we can keep bringing it back. So we like that. Proxy Magician. This is part of the FTK combo because it allows us. This is how we are able to make Blaze Phoenix without having any of the brick polymerizations. It also allows us to special summon a monster um, from our hand, which is super important. Um, 
to get to the nine cards in hand or nine cards on field. Sometimes um, we don't necessarily get all nine um, without it. So it allows us to get like, if we have an extra hand trap in hand, we can special summon it and get the ninth card. The only card it can't really special summon is Nibiru. Um, the Obviously Flamberge and uh, Black Witch are over a thousand attack points but they happen to also be part of the combo so they shouldn't be in your hand by the time you need to use the proxy magician um and uh, if you get multiples you can usually use uh jet synchron to you know that's gets rid of one of them and and special the synchron instead um so most of the time this proxy magician for everything else like if you draw maxis or any of the extra cards it just allows you to um finish the fdk as well promethean princess this is probably the number one card that is uh banished off of Keshtira unicorn it is like such a, a, a such a mixed bag because it's so powerful it's so easy to make it gets a lot of pluses um, but at the same time it locks you into fires and you got to be careful about making sure that you're getting rid of it it's also a graveyard or, or like negate not negate but disruption it's um and it's a big body and it's it's really really good it's very versatile um and it's just something you have to deal with all the time <laughs> Agave Dragon, quite literally one of the worst Link monsters ever printed. I kid you not. This this card is terrible. The art is cool, but it, the card is terrible. Um, and we're going to tell you what it uses. There. Inflict 100 damage for each dragon. There are only two dragons in this whole deck, really. Um, those are your two Flamber's dragons. Part of the FTK combo um, puts both of them into the graveyard. And this card uh, is there. Because uh, fun fact, uh, nine cards gives you 2700 points of damage um for uh blaze phoenix but it's 27 27 24 uh, as part of the combo which if you do math is 7800 points of damage so you're 200 short and the agave dragon does the extra 200 of course this is only needed if you your opponent needs a hand trap so if they don't need a hand trap you you can get the uh 3000 3000 2700 then you have the damage with just the blaze phoenix but if you do get hand trapped or you don't have an extender or whatever um and you're doing nine you're going to need the agave dragon to finish it off i've actually never summoned this card to date because everyone scoops before i get to the agave dragon but um it, it's there <laughs> i promise i will get to eight thousand. amber amblo whale this card is like interesting it's very common to play it's one that i am like not super happy with i feel like it does it it feels very mid it's definitely something i feel like i would want to cut in pure but it is required as part of the ftk combo um it's weird but we needed a link four that can get us out of the um the uh, the princess promethean princess so it is actually had to be played for the ftk but i i really um dislike it i i see a lot of builds play this um in pure that aren't playing ftk or even the other ones and i it just seems very lackluster it's like okay it's a big beater it's got some like recursion but it's i feel like there's better things to build uh over this uh obviously appalooza i mean four material appalooza that during their turn that can't be destroyed by card effects like is so busted and it's backed up by link karibo so it basically can't be killed by battle at least the first time it's so powerful um this is probably my most summoned link monster in master duel ever it's it's just it's really good and we continue to make it and then a card that a lot of people i feel like forget about is zelantis this card is like kind of busted like kind of breaks the game it just like banishes everything and brings it back so um they get all their banish effects and then they come back and they get all their summon effects and then you can rearrange them so if you know you need to have their stuff your opponent's stuff go in face down defense position so you can attack over it you certainly can do that and then of course you can rearrange everything so everything's co-linked so then this card can pop cards like so good it's obviously part of the ftk combo for you know getting another blaze dragon uh burn but it's also like really good just in general like is uh it's just a really good card and i think it's forgotten about so anyway that is basically the whole deck i talked about this for a long time 
but um, I yeah, I really enjoyed it. So after this, I'll go and probably show you the FTK combo. All right, here we are with a game where we're going first and we have the FDK replay. Uh, so we're going to need either an Ash and some access to um, Diabelle Star Black Witch. Um, so we have the Wanted that gets us there, which is great. That's an extra plus. So then we normal summon Ash and then bring out Poplar and use its effect. That's pretty standard for almost all the combos. We're going to go get the Field Spell here because Diabelle Star gets us access to Spoils. And we're going to go get us the Flamberge from Deck. Um, then we're going to go make a Link Karibo and bring back the effect uh, of Poplar, and then we can send Poplar with the Diabelle Star um, and go get Sinful Spoils. Of course, we have one in hand, but we're going to get another one. Um, why not? Ash is then going to use its effect and going to go get us an Oak, and Oak will use its effect to get us a Poplar. Then we can link into a um, Proxy uh, Magician here, and that's going to give us access to make the fusion. And then we're just going to spoils to send the Flamberge to go get the Jet Synchron, which is the machine that we need to make the Blaze Phoenix. And then Flamberge would trigger to get us more materials. Um, then we can use Proxy Magician here to go get our Blaze Phoenix. And then we're going to be off to the races to get nine cards. Uh, Proxy Magician is going to allow us to special summon that hand trap to get you know an extra card there. And then we're going to actually draw with the Wanted just in case. And then we're going to use Jet Synchron to uh, get rid of the Nibiru because it's over a thousand and get us an extra monster. And then we're going to set the other two and get us um, the two nine cards. Then we're going to go get a Prometheum Princess. Um, and we use the, uh, obviously, Blaze Phoenix to make it and bring the Blaze Phoenix back so that it can trigger again. And then we're going to have to get out of the there so we can special um, a non-fire. So we're going to go make an Amblo Whale. And then we're going to get Zelantis. And Zelantis is going to allow us to reset the field, um, which is going to allow us to Blaze Phoenix an additional time so we reset the field and get all of that back so after this we'll be 200 short um, unfortunately we don't really have any replays where they let us get to the agave dragon but in that case we'd actually go get oak to bring out another flamberge and then link into agave and that would do the extra 200 that we would need there all right, here we are again with another replay of an FTK. It looks a little bit different. The combo changes a little bit different lines. So we'll just go through it, but it still requires Ash plus um, plus the Wanted um, to get us there. So we're going to start the same way, exactly the same way where we get Poplar off of Ash and then go get um, the Field Spell. Now the Field Spell this time is going to give us an Ash um we're gonna go get oh i mean sorry an oak so we're gonna get oak and then we're gonna send oak so we haven't used oak's ability but we are going to go get flamberge we get to special summon it then we can diabel star uh, any card in the hand doesn't really matter and go get the sinful spoils um and then we're gonna go and use that sinful spoils because we no longer need it to go get a jet synchron because we are going to need that then we flamberge to go get Diabelle back. It doesn't really matter, but we just need to get anything back at this point um, to get a card into the Spell and Trap card. Then we go into Proxy Magician uh, with the Flamberge Dragon, uh, and it's going to trigger twice. And then we are going to use Oak as effect um, to go get another card. And then we can, um, ma you know, Magician into our um, Blaze Phoenix. And now we need to get up to nine cards there. Um, Poplar hasn't triggered yet, so that gets us an extra card in the grave. Then we can Wanted to go draw another card. And now we can have two cards that we can just set. Um, or, you know, if that was a monster, we could use the Jet Synchron there. So we'll just, you know, show that off. And then, you know, here's the same combo here. We're just going to go into Promethean Princess so we can bring back the... Um, blaze phoenix and burn again and then we can actually zelantis here because this actually will do the full 8000 without using the um we won't actually need to use the uh the agave dragon here because we actually got to 10 cards on field this is just a, a situation where we didn't need to but they won't allow us to uh complete the win here but that would have been an ftk without having to use agave dragon because of the way that we drew all right, here we are with a match where we are actually going second. I wanted to show you a replay like this. We're also playing against the Mirror Match here, although he's playing a very different variant that focuses more on the Diabelle Stars. 
um, and more consistency, being able to play in with the spell casters and stuff that allows him to draw and wear off those and things that like that. But in general, he's doing a very similar combo. He plays more of the Diabella Star um, spells and traps as well than I do. But in general, he's, like I said, going for the same play here um, where he's going to try and uh, end up on, uh, you know, a flamberge with some quick plays to, you know, play during my main phase. There's the IP Mascarena, and there is the Promethean Princess. Those are all um, pretty standard plays here. I like the fact that we can see some of the percentages that come up. You can see Snake Eyes are very common. And um, yeah, so here he gets to play um, with the the Promethean Princess and, and there. But we're going to try and stop that IP Mascarena. Uh, fortunately, in the mirror match, we get to use cross Act Designator, so that's great. We can actually banish our Flamberge. We don't really have uh, a ton here to go off of. We need to really stop him from going into um, the IP Mascarena, and preventing him from going into Flamberge during this turn would be great. Of course, we're going to prevent ourselves from doing that as well, but it will be probably better that way. Um, we do, he does have the other ability with the field spell to special summon IP Mascarena, um, but he would nag a ton, um, to end up getting that off. And, but we don't really want him to have it even so. So we're going to Cosmic Cyclone, um, that as well. Um, and we know that that set card's a dead trap because he doesn't have a, um, he doesn't have the Diabell Star to send for it, um, at least on the field he could uh, theoretically have it in hand but we played around that so um now we're just going into combo but we totally expect the promethean princess to come back we uh did not expect to get through uh, anything like that so promethean princess comes back and if we were to get rid of it he has the amber whale in graveyard so we're going to sinful spoils here into oak um, which gives us another play here. And rather than extending with, you know, the one for one and the Jet Synchron, which is which is great here, um, I think the, the best play is to just go into the burb. The infamous Fuko bird, the does not give a crap about you, Fuko bird. We do have a defense position monster here, so we can take 200 to basically get a four material. He's not really triggering anything on chain, so I feel comfortable going into downard so that we can get a four material Zeus here, and that's super powerful. We're going to put in defense mode because we're not really going to do too much here. We're going to wipe up the board clear off the board and now we've reset the board it's three to three the flamberge is still negated because of the cross out designator which we wanted to make sure we got rid of that and now he has to start over again so he gets to add back a black witch uh and i think that he was going to set a uh, and then he gets to draw off it too which is awesome and i was expecting him to set a um uh sinful spoils he did discard the jet synchron there so that's really good for him um, but he didn't so i can actually wait because uh he had the sinful spoils in hand and he got the ash but we see that field spell he actually played two field spells and it, i feel like is uncommon but um is very useful in the mirrors but we cannot let that field spell resolve so we have to wipe it and he doesn't really have anything here um he had, does have a jet synchron engraved but he Ops not to use it. Then we go the one for one, and he uses Ash, which is great for him. That is a total neg on us, but we haven't normal summoned, and we still haven't used our Oak. We still have an Oak in hand, and then we can go in the full DK combo. He knows this, and he scoops up right there. So that's an example of going second in the mirror match. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys super appreciated that video. It was a little bit different than my Azure Lane content, but it was something that I was interested in this week. So I figured I'd make a video and hope you guys uh, did enjoy this. If you did, make sure to like it. Thank you so much. Take care until next time.